Hi, Year 13. So we're going to look at some of the examples of homogeneous catalysis that you need to be aware of. So you need to have your notepacks open, page 23, the section on homogeneous catalysis. And we're going to go through two key examples that you just have to know. You have to be able to commit these to memory for your exam. So this first one involving peroxidisulfate ions and a second one which is known as autocatalysis which you need to be able to commit these equations to memory and recall them for an exam situation. Okay so as with yesterday I'm going to um, explain these in a bit more detail on a piece of paper and then you'll be able to have a go at some tasks. Okay so in this topic there's two key examples of homogeneous catalysis that you just need to know. So it is one of those one of those topics where you just have to kind of essentially commit some key equations to memory. So I'm going to talk you through them. They're the same ones which are in your notepack um, that uh, I've already referred to, but sometimes it just helps to have a sort of a, you know, a, a tailored explanation of each of them. So one of the first examples of homogeneous catalysis that you just need to know is for this reaction here. So this is called a peroxodisulfate ion, and it's reacting with iodide ions. Now, the first question you could be asked is, why does this reaction have a very slow rate when it's not catalyzed? And the answer to that is, it's a reaction which has taken place between two negative ions. So they're going to be repelling one another. The chance of them having a successful collision is pretty slim. So these two would both need a lot of energy if they're going to undergo a successful collision. So that's the reason why we need to catalyze this reaction if we're going to turn them into our sulfate ions and iodine. Okay, so... Iron 2 plus ions, Fe2 pluses, act as our catalyst in this reaction, okay? And the reason why it's homogeneous is because all of these are ions. This all takes place in the aqueous phase. So this is a solution phase reaction. So the first process, the first step in this uh, reaction is where our iron 2 plus ions react with the peroxidisulfate anion. Of course, now we're reacting between a positive and a negative ion, so these are going to attract to each other much more quickly. And in this first step, the peroxidisulfate anion turns into two sulfate ions, and our iron gets oxidized from 2 plus up to 3 plus. So that's sort of the first, you know, the halfway step in our, in our reaction. Now, the definition of a catalyst is it's something which uh, increases the rate of reaction without being used up. And at the moment, our catalyst has been turned from a 2 plus into a 3 plus. So we need to turn our 3 plus ion back to a 2 plus towards the end of this reaction. And that occurs in step two. So the ion 3 pluses that we've already made, they start step two in this reaction. And this time they react with the iodide ions. So you can see step one reacts the peroxidisulfate anions and step two reacts the iodide ions. And again, we've got the reaction between a positive ion and a negative ion. These are gonna to attract to, uh, to one another and undergo successful collisions quite easily. And at the end of this step, our iron three plus ions have been reduced back down to iron two pluses and our iodides have ended up as iodines. So we've regenerated our catalyst and hopefully when we add up everything on the left hand side of these two arrows and everything up on the right hand side will get our overall reaction. So we can cancel anything which, uh, which features on both sides. So we've got an iron three plus there and an iron three plus there. We've got an iron two plus and an iron two plus. So by the time you get rid of all those things that cancel, we've got S2, O4, two minus, so S2, sorry, that should be O8, my error. S2, O8, two minus reacting with two lots of iodide ions and that's going to make two lots of SO4, 2 minus and iodine, which is the overall reaction that we're looking for at the top there. So that's one key example of homogeneous catalysis that you just need to learn. Now I'm going to go through a second example, a second reaction that you need to be aware of as well. This one is a, a special case example because it's also known as autocatalysis and this is where the product of the reaction is the catalyst. So in this reaction, we're carrying out a reaction between manganate ions. These are bright purple ions, a bright purple solution with uh, H plus ions with protons and ethane dioate ions, C2O4 two minuses. And again, it's the same situation as last time. These are negative, these are negative. They're not gonna want to collide with one another very willingly. At the beginning, the reaction occurs to make 
two lots of manganese two pluses and water and CO2. And it's the manganese two pluses which are the catalyst. So the reaction is very slow to begin with because at the start we only have manganates, H pluses and ethane DiOA ions. We don't have any catalyst to begin with. But as soon as we start to make some of our Mn2 plus product, this can then start to catalyze our reaction. So uh, the manganese 2 plus that's been formed here, four of them will react with a manganate ion, positive and negative, so they're going to attract one another. And we end up oxidizing our manganese 2 plus to 3 plus, and we make water. And then, because it's a catalyst, our uh, manganese 2 plus has to end up back intact at the end. So the manganese 3 plus, which is formed, that manganese 3 plus then reacts with the ethane DiOA ions. It converts that to carbon dioxide and we reform our manganese 2 pluses. So this is the overall reaction, very slow reaction to begin with. As soon as we start to make a bit of product, that Mn2 plus product will then catalyze the reaction as a whole by these two processes, okay? Now, these two are a bit trickier to combine. I'm not gonna do it um, on the paper here because you notice that we've got five manganese three pluses and only two manganese three pluses here. So you actually need to combine them in certain ratios to get the overall equation. Um, but these are the, the key stages that you need to be aware of. Now, I mentioned, because it's autocatalysis, it does something a bit funny to the rate. Normally, we expect rate graphs to look something like this. If the manganate ions are the reactants, we expect the concentration of them to go down very quickly to begin with. Then as the reactants start to get used up, the rate decreases and we end up with a horizontal line indicating that the reaction's finished. We must have run out of one of our reactants. Um, now, because this is an autocatalysis process, our rate of reaction graph, our concentration time graph, looks a bit different. So actually the rate is slow to begin with because right at the start we don't have much catalyst. But as we start to make some product, we end up with some catalyst, so the rate starts to increase, so that's when it does get steeper, and then it will level off like the final line, like the uh, horizontal line before, and that must mean that we run out of one of our reagents. So this is a typical line from a concentration time graph, but because this is an autocatalysis reaction, this line best represents how the concentration of our manganate ions uh, changes during the, uh, during the course of the reaction. So that's just a little snippet that might crop up every now and then. Now, there's one little bit that I just remembered from the first example, which I'm just going to nip back and, and explain. So I'm going to go back to the original homogeneous catalysis example that I mentioned. And in this one, I said that iron 2 plus acts as the catalyst, which it does. But it can also be argued that Fe3 plus is the catalyst as well, because I've called this reaction 1 and this reaction 2. And in that process, we put iron 2 pluses in to begin with, apologies that I've crossed it out there, we formed iron 3 plus, and then the iron 3 plus that we'd made turned back to iron 2 plus, so we regenerated our catalyst. Well, you could also argue that if I call this reaction 1, so iron 3 plus, so I'm going to write it underneath, Fe3 pluses, react with our iodides to make Fe2 pluses and iodine, well, if this is our catalyst, then this needs to be regenerated. So let's then call this reaction two, the iron two pluses that we've reacted, react with the peroxidisulfate ion. We make our sulfate ion product, and then the Fe two pluses reform Fe three pluses. So depending on which of these reactions, these stages you class as reaction one or two, you could argue that iron two plus or iron 3 plus acts as the catalyst in this, um, in this homogeneous example. Okay, so those are key examples that you just need to learn. Um, I'm going to point out on your question packs now some of the tasks that you'll be able to have a go at. Okay, so having listened to those explanations, you'll be able to have a go at the following now. In your question pack, you should be able to have a go at worksheet number eight on homogeneous catalysis. So there's a couple of pages of that. And then I would like you to move to the past paper questions section and you'll be able to have a go at past paper question number three, which is on page 37. 
So past paper question number three. And then you'll also be able to have a go at past paper questions number seven, eight, and nine as well. So let me find those on here. So question seven, using the vanadium oxide uh, catalyst for the contact process. Past paper question number eight, which is our autocatalysis curve using manganate ions. And past paper question number nine, you can have a go at as well. Again, general question about uh, the process of catalysis. Okay, so worksheet eight, then past paper questions three, seven, eight, and nine. Have a go.